prepare yourselves for a battle of epic proportions between two titans. Feast upon their voices and revel in their words. This is Dueling Ogres. And welcome to episode 167. Thank you for joining us as always on this Freudian Tuesday evening, Earth date, September 18th, 2018. I'm your host, Remington Hitchcock, and with me as always, my co-host, Brandon Full. Say hello, Brandon! Hi, Remington. Uh, in the next hour, we'll be bringing to you some favorites from Dueling Ogres, uh, from geek.com, cnn.com, bbc.co.uk, and other websites. So why don't you stay tuned? First up, we're going to see how Remington's been doing. How have you been doing, Remington? <laughs> what, why are we doing the so- soft voices? I'm working on my radio voice. Oh, yeah? For radio shows. I was going to say, you're not working on your radio vo- voice. You're working on your uh, ASMR. public. <laughs> your public. Um, oh, my God. What's it called? Speaking. Pu- no, public radio. Public radio. The public National radio. National public radio. There we go. NPR. You're working <laughs> on your NPR voice. God, I had to go a long way for that one. Yeah, that was a, that was a round trip. <laughs> yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that small travel. But the whole time you were traveling around, you could be listening to the sweet sounds of NPR. Yeah. Only on NPR. Yeah. NPR.org. <laughs> we have new mics. We do. <laughs> so I'm trying out my ASMR, too. I got you. I mean, you probably need to be a lot closer for that. I'm going to put you in a baby basket. You're just a little baby. I have no idea if that's going to come through or not, to be honest. It should. Yeah? It'll come through just because it's creepy enough to come through. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yes, we got, uh, I, I pulled the trigger and uh, surfed on the Ebays for a couple of AT2020 microphones. So these are condenser microphones where before I was using dynamic microphones. I won't get too far into it because I don't want to lose Brandon. <laughs> Oh, it's too late. He's you gone. Me. He's gone. But anyway, they're more sensitive, so uh, hopefully they'll pick up a little better, and we'll have a little cleaner sound. And you get shall to see. hear our voices better in surround sounds. Mo better. No, it's still going to be mono. No, it's totally. It's always mono. Oh, yeah. You always said my voice was mono when we first started recording. <laughs> yeah. You said that I talked flat. Yes. Everything you said was the same cadence. <laughs> <laughs> I totally that wasn't a robot me and now I'm real me. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Why would you even suggest that? I, I didn't. I didn't at all. It sounded like you were implying it. No. Don't Inject. read into my memes, Inject. Brandon. <laughs> Inside jokes. Inside nobody jokes. will understand. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes a great podcast. <laughs> People love inside <laughs> jokes they don't get. Oh. Uh, I'm in a lot of pain. Okay. Strange segue. Yeah, uh, there was no segue. I'm just continuing on what I've been doing. I've I've got a muscle that's up in my neck and or shoulder blade that is just swollen as all anything. And uh, if I turn my head too much, or if I raise my arm too much, or if I do anything too much, then it hurts. Did you do something to strain it? Or? Oh, probably. I mean, I move mattresses around all day. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. And then when I'm not moving mattresses around, I literally do nothing. Yeah. So it's so kind it's of... nothing or moving heavy objects. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's probably what happened. No in-between. Nope, no in-between. Uh, other than that, I also got a new boom mic stand. That way Brandon can feel fancy as well instead of having to use a uh, a regular mic stand. My microphone, the arm that it's on looks like in my shop class in high school, and you might have done the same thing. There was a robot arm that you could program. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Uh what it reminds me of. Something that would come out of the space station and grab passing asteroids. Right. (laughs) Right. Pinch the tuchus of space babes. (laughs) Yeah. It's not sexist. I'm a machine. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Space station. Yeah. Those are all things that happen in real time space. Yeah. Yeah. So I let him take the big one, and until I can afford to grab another one, I've I've still got the one with springs on the outside of it, which 
You, you probably heard that. That was me flicking one of the springs. This one doesn't have springs so on the outside. There, I may regret asking this, Remington. Uh-huh. But is there a bonus to having a bigger arm like this outside of range of movement? No. Okay. No, there's no there's no complicated mic answer to that. <laughs> no, it's just what I liked about this uh, Samson arm is that it doesn't have external springs. That's it. That's the only reason why I want these boom arms. Okay. That and they're they're just generally more sturdy. And they are fancy looking. Yeah. They're very fancy. Yeah. It's professional as fuck in here now. It really is. <laughs> I was trying to find something unprofessional in this room to make a joke, and I can't. Yeah. Because it's professional in here. Yeah. Listeners, you're missing out. Drive down to West Virginia, and you can come sit in this room with us. Yeah. We had five people crammed in this room last week. <laughs> we did. That was amazing. Yeah, it was. So did, did you enjoy the podcast last week? Like doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Did, should we do more with more people more often? I think that's something for the listeners to decide, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, guys, if you want more people more often, just let us know. I mean, they don't have to be, like, guest guests. They can just be, like, dudes we pulled off the street. Yeah. Chicks we pulled off the street. As long as they don't interrupt the flow. Yeah. Then they go. If they if they go against the flow. Then it's time to say no, bro. <laughs> Rhyming is huge in the podcasting world right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe you. I'm working on that SEO money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Most search things. Number one, rhyming. Number two, Emmys. Number three, podcasts. Number four, rhyming and podcasts with Emmys. <laughs> rhyming and podcasts with Emmys. I'm not even going to attempt to do that. Okay, good. Because all I know about the Emmys is from Wizard in the Wardrobe, Keisha, yeah. was filling me in on Emmy stuff last night. Oh, really? Mm. (laughs) Well, that was nice of her. Yeah. There's a show that's on, I believe it was Amazon Prime. I'm like 90% sure it was Amazon Prime, called The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Okay, yeah. I've heard of it. About like a stand-up comic in the 50s or 60s, I think, around the same time as Lenny Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they kind of swept the comedy category, which was awesome for me to hear because I loved that show. It was fantastic. Oh, did you watch Mm. it? Oh, that's Oh, yeah, I watched all of it in like three days nice it has alex borstein in it Uh uh-huh and she plays like a rough and tumble lesbian with like a really heavy new york accent who wants to get in fights with everybody oh (laughs) that sounds good yeah Hmm. i'll have to you said it's on amazon prime Uh uh-huh i might have to watch that it's worth checking out she goes to become a stand-up comic unintentionally like she gets the first episode she gets drunk yeah. And just happens to kind of stumble into an open mic session. Right. And just talks about her life. And like she flashes a boob and she's cussing. And this is all stuff that's pretty much unheard of outside of like Lenny Bruce and male comics. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So she gets arrested. Right. And that kind of sets off the whole thing of her trying to hide the fact that she's a comedian versus wanting to go out and do this and get better. Yeah. And Alex Borstein is an agent. So she becomes her agent. Nice. Yeah. Well, that sounds cool. I actually started watching uh, the second half of The Tick, finally. Oh, you hadn't watched it? No, I hadn't watched the second the second uh, part of season one, is technically what it was. Yeah. Um, it's I was, really good. I was waiting for Ginger, but we just, <laughs> we have had less and less time together now that she's like selling the pearls and doing that thing, and there hasn't been really anything to watch on TV, so we just kind of throw it on the background, eat our dinner, and then go about what we're doing. Yeah. And then... My work schedule has been crazy anyway, so it's stressful. So I haven't really. So, yeah, I just pulled it up and started watching it at work one day. What do you think of it so far? I'm really enjoying it. I'm I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoyed the first bit of it. It feels like they kind of either I'm not paying attention as much or they kind of step back the uh, Amazon shoving Amazon down your throat ad placements yeah they kind of did yeah so i like the first episode that we come back to a little bit of spoilers where the terror captures uh arthur and he's trying to learn the drums and stuff and uh he yells at alexa yo yeah one more time and then i and then it just kind of simmers down from there i wasn't really noticing a whole lot more from it so i can see i'm so blind to that kind of stuff i never really notice it well, if I if I'm well invested into the storyline, then I won't notice it. But so that may have been part of what happened is that I just I really started soaking in what was going on and, and yeah. uh lost all semblance of ad placement. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah, it's I, I was really enjoying it. I need to uh, finish it up. I can't remember what episode I ended on. It's been a couple of days since I've watched it. So. Yeah, you do need to finish it up so we can talk about it. Yeah, I'll probably sure. have to read like a recap because I watched it the day it came out. I watched it over the course of like a couple of days. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, there's only what, like six episodes? Yeah, six more episodes. I think there's 12 now total. It was yeah. a full season, 12 or 13. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. I'll have to finish it up uh, maybe this week if I can manage. <laughs> we shall see. It's yeah. been a slow week so far. So give it a shot. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I've been doing. What have you been doing? Um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been doing the same thing. I've been working. Like yeah. I mentioned last week, I started smoking again. Yeah. Which is a shame. I know. Yeah. I've been smoking a lot, too. Like, <laughs> I think because I have so much stress going on in my life, like outside. Yeah. I think I picked up smoking as like a way to rebel against the stress. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I went back to smoking like a half a pack a day immediately. Wow. Yeah. So my throat's constantly sore. I feel like shit. I get out of <laughs> breath walking places again. Yeah. So it just, it all jumped right back at you. Huh? Yeah, it did. That's a bummer. Well, hopefully everything will fucking lighten up here soon. And maybe you can step it back and stop again. Yeah, I I definitely plan on stopping again. Yeah. This isn't like, well, I started smoking again, so I might as well smoke forever. Right. This yeah. is one of those things that I acknowledge. Like, I've got a lot going on. I'm allowing myself to smoke. We'll deal with that problem later. <laughs> I've got <laughs> yeah. too many other fires to put out right now. Right. Figurative and literal fires. <laughs> I also picked up arson. Oh, okay. Well, that's... It goes with the smoking. Yeah. Whenever you flick the cigarette. Oh, no. When I say smoking, I don't mean I'm smoking cigarettes. I mean I'm literally just smoking things. Oh, okay. With fire. Okay. So have you expanded... Past like, you know, beef and ham and now mainly just... trash barrels. I've been uh, hanging out with a lot of hobos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh there's no truer meal to be had than in the midst of hobos. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words, Remington. <laughs> Thank you. No truer meal to be had. Than in the midst of hobos. In the midst of hobos. <laughs> We'll go ahead and trademark that. Yeah, that'll be our next shirt. That'll sure. be our next TV show. That'll be our next TV show shirt. It'll be like Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown. Yeah. Or Gordon Ramsay, except we go and hang out with hobos and <laughs> deride their food. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> it's beans from a can. <laughs> Mixed with a little bit of rat, what do you want? <laughs> Are you serving me canned food? And not even the good parts of the rat. <laughs> we ate those yesterday. Uh, I don't want to know what the bad parts of the rat are. <laughs> I mean, good parts, obviously, legs. Yeah, it's and like the eyeballs. Legs. And the eyes, Yeah, naturally. for sure. Bad parts, the teeth? Yeah. Um, like the little tiny spleen? The little oh, rat yeah, spleen? Rat spleen's going to be gross. Yeah, for sure. Kidneys would probably be all right. Yeah, and perfect with beans. Yeah, th yeah there you go. That's why they ate them yesterday. Yeah. Because <laughs> they knew they were going to have those kidney beans tonight. Yeah. They wanted a reminder. Is that why they're called kidney beans? Yeah. Because no. they look like kidneys. Okay. Yeah. Not because they're good served with kidney. Right. No. Okay. It's because they look like little kidneys. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. At least that's all. That's what I've always assumed. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong too, I guess. But we'll go with it. So other than that, I haven't been doing anything else, huh? Just no. Not work, really. smoke, sleep. Work, smoke, sleep. And not try to kill everybody around you. Yeah. I'm on my phone all the time. It is insane. Like if I'm home, if so here's if you listeners, you want to picture what I do when I'm off work, I go home, I lay in bed and I'm just on my phone. I'm on Facebook. I'm chatting with people on messenger. I'm chatting with people through discord. Yeah. Just waiting for somebody to send me a message. <laughs> It's sad. I know it's sad. I'm bringing the podcast down, but it's sad. <laughs> do, you, do you just need to come hang out more? I mean, I get out pretty regularly. I come to D&D &D on Sundays. Yeah. I do Pathfinder at my brother's on Thursdays. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good mix of actually getting me out of the house to do stuff. Yeah, that's true. How's Pathfinder been? Uh, I actually didn't go last week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but. Fair. 
the week before it was good. Yeah. And I'm going this Thursday again to play. Okay. It's cool. a new part of the campaign where everybody's holy characters. I think I mentioned that. Yeah. So I'm playing a half orc cleric. We started DMing your your end. Yeah. Which has been fun. I made a character for 5e. Yeah. What'd you think about the creation process? Um, okay, so I cheated a little and I ended up using uh D and D Beyond, which is like an official but separate entity from Wizards of the Coast. So, like, they're officially a license to use uh, D&D stuff from Wizards of the Coast. But, like, if you want to do anything past, like, a real basic character creation, you have to buy stuff. Yeah. So you have to buy the rights to to utilize the stuff and use the stuff from the books. And you have to pay full price for those books, too. Yeah, yeah, you do. Which is crazy. Which I did. Oh, you did? I totally did. What'd you buy? Okay, so I created my character for last week, and I just made a basic one. But I wanted to go assassin rogue. So I'm playing a Durgar, uh, Durgar assassin archetype rogue. Yes. Uh, and I'm sure I'll get the wording lingo wrong a little bit because I'm still not familiar with all of the, all of it from Five E. But uh, they, I had to base it off of a hill dwarf because they didn't have Durgar uh, as a sub race. I actually had to create the sub race in a homebrew, which I did, and that worked out really well. Like you can actually create the sub race and just give it whatever additions that you want it's a really nice process okay so it lets you do that for free yes yes so i was able to create that for free i wasn't able to get the assassin archetype so i bought the player's handbook so i could get the assassin archetype which was 30 bucks yeah and then i also bought xanthar's guide to everything or xanathar is it xanathar or xanthar xanathar xanathar xanathar's guide to everything because i'm probably going to build out ginger's character as well Oh, okay. Just so we can, just so I can check her numbers against what she had and see how it all built out. Um, mostly it's for me, so I can further understand the character creation process. Do you have access to those books in PDF format now? Yes, I believe so. You'd have to, I would hope. Yeah, and, and really what comes with it, like, I kind of get why they are charging basically full price for it. It's, because when you get that, you have the ability to just search for whatever information you want out of it. So, like, you can just search for, oh, I need to know what a critical role is or what advantage means. I can just type it in and look it up. So it's, I mean, you can do that on the Internet anyway. Yeah. You know, it exists out there. But having it all in one place is kind of nice. Uh, if I wanted to look up something really obscure all of a sudden during in game i could be able could to do just that search and find the rule for it yeah so that's kind of nice and this is D D beyond yes D D beyond uh critical roles use it so if you if any of you watch um critical roles stream on twitch you can actually sign in using twitch uh or a couple of the other you know social media things like facebook or uh, google or whatever so it's 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 technically dueling ogres because I keep that branding going. So, you know, Dueling Ogres, same same thing that we use for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that kind of allows me, like, if I ever get to, if we ever actually do some streaming of D&D or something like that, you know, I can have a D&D Beyond branded thing that we could utilize. Yeah. So I think that would be cool. Keep that branding on point. Yes. Always, always about the branding, Brandon. So I built out my character properly this time. I may have taken a little liberties and got a couple of extra potion or er, poisons. Okay. Uh, not the super expensive ones, but some pricier ones. Some non-ingested ones. Yeah, some non-ingested ones. Because I went to use a poison on somebody and I was going to coat my sword with it. And I was like, oh shit, this is an ingested poison. <laughs> so that literally does me no good unless I'm trying to do some subterfuge. You just sneak up behind him and you're like, eat this. Yeah, drink this. <laughs> taste it it's not poison oh okay <laughs> but uh i had a lot of fun playing i was really excited yeah you jumped right back into it you even did a voice yeah i keep losing it though because like i wanted to be a cross between actual batman even though we have a character played by kevin who was on last week's podcast 
playing a third rendition of a character called Batman. Yeah. And um, he's nothing if not consistent. Yeah, exactly. But I'm trying to go with like a gravelly voice Batman, but he's also a dwarf. So, you know, you have to do that iconic Scottish fucking brogue. Thank you. That's the word that I was looking for. Yeah, I figured that Scottish fucking brogue to get to it. Yeah. So you want to give him a little taste of your assassin there? You would like a little taste of my assassin, wouldn't you? It's good. Thank you. So he's like, he's a Durgar, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Durgar from the Underdark, which was Forgotten Realms, correct? Yes. And they're a dark-skinned dwarf, so they're very similar just in idea as the Drow, who are from the Underdark and are dark-skinned elves. Mm-hmm. And then they made dark skinned gnomes too. They pretty much were just like, ah, let's make everything dark skinned. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and giving them a slight hint of evil. Yeah. So So let's move on to some stories. Let's get this knocked out because we are gonna go to dinner afterward. Oh yeah. I celebrated my birthday over the weekend. I forgot about that. Yeah, I was gonna ask about it and then we got off on a tangent. Yeah. So how was how was the birthday? Your birthday was on Saturday? Yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah. It was nice. That's good. Yep. I hung out with my daughter. I went to my parents' house. We had cake. Yeah. We have a family tradition, I'm sure I mentioned it before when I mentioned my birthday, where if it's your birthday, you eat cake without your hands. Yeah. So my daughter and I both did that because she always likes to join in too. Yeah. Yep, we did that at my parents' house. I got some cold hard cash from my parents and my siblings. Nice. And then Bree got me a $25 gift card to the local comic book shop. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like a very enjoyable birthday for sure. It was. It was good. That's I had good. steak Saturday night. I went out and bought myself a ribeye steak and cooked it and ate it. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're a man. A man, man, man. I mean, you have been for a while. Yeah, but, but now, just now is when I became a real boy. Yeah. A real man. A real man. Yeah, it's like you've... a weirder version of Pinocchio. <laughs> I finally crafted the perfect man. <laughs> That's Geppetto. He's all licking his fingers and his lips, and he's just like, Geppetto, come on. Do you have a story? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm working on... (laughs) No, I mean, it's a new story, not a a fanfic. Geppetto adjusted his erection. (laughs) (laughs) So I have a little bit of follow-up news. I have three stories, and one of them is a bullshit story. Okay. So I'm just letting you know. I tried to look for stories this week, listeners. I really did. I just could not find anything I cared about. Yeah. Except for you guys, which is why we're here now. Exactly. This is a follow up to something last week I mentioned where Elon Musk called that British diver a pedophile. Yeah. Were you false? No. Oh, okay. The diver is suing Elon Musk for claiming he's a, quote, child rapist is what he called him. Ah. He's suing him for $75,000, the equivalent of dollars. He's suing him in pounds. $75,000 $75,000 plus punitive damages. Wow. His, the guy's name is Vernon Unsworth, which huh. is pretty Britishy. Yeah, that's a very, a very British. Vernon Unsworth. Vernon Unsworth. Blah, 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 blah. Apparently what happened that set off this whole thing, as I mentioned, is Elon Musk offered this little handheld submarine. They said, no, that's we can't use it. It's ridiculous. And he got pretty pissed about it. Yeah. The exact quote that Vernon Unsworth gave CNN is that the sub was, quote, just a PR stunt that had absolutely no chance of working and said Mr. Musk could, quote, stick his submarine where it hurts. <laughs> so that's what set off the wrath of our high billionaire. I see. Our blitz, our blazed billionaire. I like it. I'm trying to work on some alliteration That's, that's some. I'm applying it TMZ. That's, that's fine. I like it. Yeah. I'm all about the alliteration. So a uh, real quick follow up as well. Uh, they are not making an African-American version of Golden Girls <laughs> as reported by Kevin from fake Facebook news. <laughs> Is that what it was? That's what it was. He shared the Facebook Kevin. post that was just and I mean, this is no offense to Kevin because everybody is guilty of it. Just because you see something on Facebook doesn't make it true. Yeah. So, like, if you're genuinely, like, interested in in something like that, like, it was just kind of a throwaway thing that was mentioned during a four-person podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of things can get said that are incorrect. Yes. uh, In that. A lot of things we say are half true sometimes. Yes. Stories that we read. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes we have to follow up and fix something that we got wrong. But most of the time, I mean, we try to 
I don't have any control over over Kevin's uh, detective work when it comes to story <laughs> dropping. We so. didn't question it, though. No, we didn't. We didn't. Which is one of the reasons why we are not journalists. Yeah, which is how fake news spreads, though. Exactly. You know, yeah. you can have any sort of site and post this story on your site. I mean, the, the amount of times I've seen stories shared that are like Obama is the devil and Hillary eats babies and stuff like that. Yeah. Or even, you know, stories about Trump that you look at the source and you're like, wait a minute, this is from the Federalist Papers dot or dot org or something like that. These right. Are not, this is not a true new site yeah 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 but you share it and it doesn't matter if it's true or not once it gets out there enough that people are sharing it that's all that it's there for exactly so really people be careful about what you're sharing and resharing just because it's out there doesn't make it true yeah right? check the source we should have checked the source with kevin yeah we should have but 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 the creator of the golden girls is actually working on or has been working on one called Silver Foxes, which is primarily based around uh, elderly gay couples. Oh, okay. Or elder, an elderly gay collection of, or at least part part of them. So uh, I didn't read super far into it because I was trying to research what Kevin said yeah. to find a link so I could put a link up in the show notes. And I just ended up saying that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> called S silver fox silver huh? foxes so that you can actually google and find out more information about if you're interested so it would be like a collection of four i mean is it going to use the golden girls model uh it seemed like it it seemed like it so four to five gay men all living in a house together eating cheesecake and telling stories about their old age sexual escapades yeah i can only hope anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be on basic cable. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe that they were trying to get um, George Takai to do it, or maybe he's involved in it, or something like that. Like I said, I didn't do a ton of research to follow up. I just wanted to drop that in there to replace the bad news that there's not going to be an African-American remake of Golden Girls. Yeah. With the real news that there is a show in development called Silver Foxes. I like it. I don't think I would ever in a million years watch it. Oh, yeah? I just would have no Even interest in it. Even if it had George Takai in it? I don't think I'd have any interest in it. Hello. Just like I have no interest in the Golden Girls. Did you not? See, I loved the Golden Girls when I grew up. No, I just don't care. I, I love them. Well, fair enough. That's yeah. just two strokes for different blokes. Exactly. Yeah. Two different strokes for different blokes. <laughs> two strokes for two blokes. Two. That's what we're doing later. <laughs> yeah. After dinner. That's for dessert. <laughs> Ugh. But also, hmm. <laughs> what do you, uh, that was my little follow up. Go ahead with yours. There is a video game called Alan Wake that came out on Xbox 360. Uh huh. That was done by Remedy and Nitro Games. And this game was fucking amazing. I played through it on the 360 and enjoyed every second of it. It was such a good story. Yeah. You are a writer who moves to another smaller town, kind of Stephen King-esque small town, Yeah, to start to write your next book. Your last book that you wrote is a bestseller, but you don't remember writing it. Right. So you move to this town to figure out who you are and to get over writer's block. You move with your wife, and things start to go sideways, and you start... You can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not anymore. There's multiple versions of you... There's like shadow people you have to fight. It's just, I can't do it justice without spoiling it, so I don't want to. Right, sure. But it's a really, really good game. Yeah. And they're making a TV series of it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm very excited for this. That is cool. It has almost a Twin Peaks vibe to it. So if they follow the Alan Wake story, Alan, Alan Wake had so many nods to Stephen King and Twin Peaks and just your general horror stuff. Right, yeah. That I think this will be a really good TV series if done right. That's cool. They had... In the game, when you ran across TVs, you could turn them on and watch little vignettes yeah. that were actual TV. They filmed an actual TV show of Alan Wake with the actors that they motion captured. Yeah. So you could see your character acting out things that have happened. Wow. But as an actual TV show. That's cool. Yeah, it was neat. And you would just be watching it on these little TVs in like abandoned psychiatric hospitals and stuff. Huh. What's it? Uh, what's it supposed to come out on? 
Amazon or Netflix or it hasn't been announced yet. Oh, it's so still in the very early stages. I got you. Okay. But it's so actually, it hasn't been option. The script has been written. Yeah, it hasn't been picked up. Right. Yeah. But the script has been written and they're actively pursuing getting it done. Nice. So it looks like it will happen. That's cool. Who would you like to see it picked up by? I would like to see Netflix pick it up. Yeah. Because they can do Alan Wake was I wouldn't say a hard R, but there's definitely he's fucking and shitting. Yeah. Like saying those words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna say as opposed to anybody else in the world. <laughs> Except maybe a monk. A monk with a plug. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'd say Netflix. They can do Amazon Prime for whatever reason to me feels like they kind of tone it down a little bit. Oh, really? They don't seem as free as Netflix does. And maybe that's just personal bias because I've watched a lot more stuff on Netflix than I have Amazon Prime. Yeah. I feel like Amazon Prime just kind of skirts a little bit being too, too racy. But um, mm. I don't know. I think that they they could probably get away with handling it. I think they could handle it. I mean, they might not, they might not say as many fucks. They, uh, shit is fine. Yeah, you shit's know. fine on, like, regular TV now, isn't it? More or less, yeah. But, I mean, I, I watched Jack Ryan, the first season of that, and enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah. Uh, So, I guess we'll throw a free Amazon Prime link down below. <laughs> sign yeah, up. Yeah, sure, click so, it. Sign Check up it for out. that. Check it Amazon out. Amazon Prime. Yeah. I think it's 30 days free. Or 10 days. No, it's, I think it's 30 days free. And we get a little kickback. Yeah. If I think it's if, well, no, I think we get it anyway. So yeah, I'll throw a link down below if you want to check out uh, the Tick or Jack Ryan or Marvelous Miss Maisel or Marvelous. That's right, or Marvelous Miss Maisel. That all, all three of those shows are really enjoyable. And I like am, what Amazon has been doing with their shows. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind Alan Wake on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I would just prefer Netflix, I guess. Yeah, uh, like you said, you spend a lot more time on Netflix. Yeah. I I have Amazon Prime, so we use it for shipping and all of that. It having Prime Video is just an added bonus. It really is. Yeah, and it's really nice. I don't have to necessarily get Netflix because I there is stuff that's worth watching on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bringing video games into the real life, Nvidia has been working on uh, pushing ray tracing into a more affordable consumer market. What is ray tracing? So ray tracing models the behavior of light in real time as it intersects objects in a scene. So in a video game, light from an object can do some really funky things. Sometimes you can see like light get cut off real harshly mm. and it really kind of takes you out of the out of the feel of the game. Yeah. Even if it's subconsciously. And we're also talking like reflection as well. So like the amount of reflection that's off of something shiny could be more or less because that has to be programmed in. You know, okay, yeah. it has to react to it. So however good that engine is that's reacting to it uh, is, is interwoven with how realistic the scene that you're watching is, is, feeling to you yeah light does play a lot in video games as far as adding realism to it yeah so this comes from the verge ray tracing is a term you're going to hear a lot now that video nvidia has announced professional and consumer graphics cards that use this technique to produce some of the most lifelike simulations possible in games and other animations it's a feature that could lead to spectacular new graphics but it has been very hard to pull off because of the computational requirements but NVIDIA is tackling several issues facing ray tracing with a new graphics architecture known as Turing. First, it's tackling the problem of ushering in the next generation of computer graphics. Ray tracing is only one of many rendering techniques, but it's where NVIDIA is pushing hard because it's especially suited for adding realistic, real-time lighting and effects. The second issue is the computational cost. The best Turing card for professional production costs $10,000. Holy crap. But it was even costlier to use ray tracing before. What's new here is NVIDIA is ready to bring ray tracing tech to consumer level GPUs, which has not been done before. So currently, most of the industry simulates light 
and how light behaves in a given scene in a much more simple way using something called rasterization, which is a term that if you've played video games and especially video games on the computer, you know of what rasterization is. I have no idea. Really? Really, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Don't fair enough me. <laughs> like a painter painting layers on a canvas, objects are rendered from back to front, so those in the front obscure the objects in the back. Oh, okay. This makes it hard to model a mirror, for example, because rasterization techniques can't track and model light itself. It's used often in real-time scenes because current generation hardware can't keep up with the demands of simulating a complex scene in motion for something that requires it, i.e. a game or 3D animation. This next generation of light simulations can model light in much more detail without as much computational cost as before. Ray tracing models the behavior of light as it intersects with surfaces, materials, and moving objects. So ray tracing, it, this isn't exactly a new technology. It's been around for a while. This article on The Verge goes on to say that it's been used in Pixar's Monster University, uh, the Iron Man movies, things like that. So it's it's something that exists. It's just now NVIDIA is really pushing it to come to the consumer market. So we'll be able to see things like uh, this Star Wars demo that they put out, which I'm going to play for Brandon. And uh, the link for this article will be down in the description below. Yeah, you could definitely see them showing off that light. Yeah. Especially with Captain Phasma's armor. Yeah, for sure. With the um, the lights through the elevator. Yeah. And what did you think of the quality? I mean, that almost... It was fantastic. Like, it looked pr- as, as close to, like, real life to me. Like, yeah. it looked like you could have replaced all of those with actors in actual scenes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, it was really impressive to me. It was done in what the Unreal Engine. The Unreal Engine can do some fantastic things. Yeah, absolutely you can. Uh, Immersive Entertainment, ILM Lab, Unreal Engine, and Nvidia are the creators by, of that. It's a big jump in graphics tech, and is exciting when you think about the studios and individuals that will find new uses for ray tracing and animation games and science simulations. Even if the new hardware NVIDIA produces will only be available for desktops first, laptops with ray tracing tech will start coming to the market next year, so they're not too far off. In fact, certain upcoming games like Metro Exodus already have the NVIDIA RTX demo showing off real ray tracing doing its thing. So, look forward to that. I mean, any of you gamers, this is going to be the next push. This yeah. Is, this is going to be the thing that makes your games look that much more awesome. And it's going to be expensive as hell. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> they are bringing a shit ton of Final Fantasy games to PlayStation 4, Switch, and Xbox One. Yes, which we we Last talked week we mentioned a little bit about bringing, the Square Enix stuff. We mentioned that they were bringing Crystal Chronicles. Yes, well, Crystal Chronicles and then uh, The Last Remnant. Yeah. Yeah. They announced after that, and I wish we would have had this story before to talk a little bit more with John about. They announced after that that... Final Fantasy 7, 9, 10, 10, 2, and 12 are all being released on all three systems. Oh, wow. Yeah. On all three systems? Yep. They're wow. coming to Xbox One, which is amazing because Square hasn't put almost anything on Xbox One. Yeah, that is crazy. So I'm very excited to get my hands on 9 and playing through 9. Yeah. Was 9 your favorite? I've never played through 9. Oh, okay. It's a lot of people consider nine their favorite. Yeah. I own it for PlayStation two or original place, whichever it's for. I think original PlayStation maybe. Yeah. And I put probably 10 hours into it, which is not very much for a final fantasy. Yeah, game sure. Absolutely. And got stuck on a part and didn't feel like going back to it. Yeah. So I'm excited to start over. And I mean, it's a remaster, so it's going to look nicer. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And that's supposed to be 2019 sometime. Okay, so we still got a little bit of time left. Yeah, it's nothing soon. Gotcha. Nintendo has unveiled launch plans for a whole bunch of well-known indie titles to come out here relatively soon. Really? What all did they say? Do you have a list? Uh, we've got Undertale, which is supposed to be coming out today. Super Giants Bastion was supposed to come out the 13th. Uh, Transistor in November. The mobile hit Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP in October and the multiplayer Chaos of Towerfall, September 27th, complete with characters from Celeste. 
And those are the more established games, this article on Engadget says. When this article was released, which was actually a few weeks ago, Into the Breach, uh, Hyper Light Drifter Special Edition, Wasteland 2 Director's Cut, Jackbox Party Pack is supposed to come in October. So a whole lot of Switch indie games coming to, I, I assume, this that Switch has a market yeah, place. They do. So all digital downloads, I assume, mm-hmm. running off of their marketplace. The Switch has some pretty impressive hardware behind it. Yeah. I haven't got my hands on one yet. I will someday. But... I, I even want to get a Switch. Like, I really do want a Switch. Yeah. So a Switch and a capture card, <laughs> and I will stream the shit out of it. That would be cool. Yeah. I'd like to see you play some Switch. Yeah. And I, you, you could join me. That would be the best part of it. Yeah. Like, that's the only reason to really get it is to... So if you want to donate to the cause of us <laughs> getting a Switch, there's a donation button down there in the description, Just too. Just give us $300. Just give us $300. It'll be fine. Yeah. If if 300 of you gave us a dollar, we'd be able to get a Switch. Or 600 of you gave us 50 cents. Yeah. Or 150 of you gave us $2. <laughs> We're good at math. Yeah. <laughs> This is straight up begging at this point. Yeah, we just, just buy us a switch. Just, just buy us a switch, please. Don't worry about it. You have <laughs> money for it. I'll quit my job. I'll quit my job just to play Switch for you. <laughs> Are you happy now? Are you're, you happy now? I'm eating out of a bean you're can. You're eating the good rats. I'm eating the good. No, beans. you're eating the bad rats. <laughs> yeah. And then continuing on in video game news, the first 100% uncensored adult game has been approved for Steam release. Aw, yeah. So this is from Ars Technica, a game that a developer is calling Steam's first 100% uncensored adult game is set to hit the popular PC platform Friday, which this came out on the 11th, so that would have been the 14th, complete with sexual interactions and nudity that were previously blocked by black bars. Negligee Love Stories was part of a group of erotic visual novels and other games that were removed from the service or held up for approval in recent months amid a crackdown on sexually explicit content on the store. Many developers responded to that restriction by adding black or censored bars to the Steam versions of their games, then directing players to outside sites for downloadable patches to remove those bars. Now, though, Negligee developer Darker Studio says an uncensored version of the game has completed the Steam review process and will be available without any need for patching on Friday, September 14th. Valve announced back in June that it would be taking a more hands-off approach to Steam game creation for anything that isn't illegal or straight-up trolling. Listing for adult games, though, have still been held up as the company worked on new filtering tools to stop users from seeing these explicit games unintentionally. So basically, Steam, aka Valve, you know, Valve's the company that owns Steam. Right. They they they've been working now. For any of you who use Steam, Brandon, you may be able to back me on this. Uh, or if you don't use Steam, if you download the app for the computer, it's it's like the most bare bones, awkward, almost like there's no shine really, or there's not much shine or polish to it. To Steam, yeah, yeah, it's very much. It feels what like do you want. Yeah, it's it feels like it's an app from the late nineties. Yeah, like just the the whole design of it in general. It feels very late nineties, early two thousand. Steam on mobile is even worse. Is it to get to the store to search for a game yeah. to check a price is like a four step process. Oh wow, yeah, that's insane. So they <laughs> they have some work that could be done, but it is at least nice to know that they're working on like their filtering to where maybe in their, I, I guess, age restriction, the age gating to where your 13 year old isn't going to be met with a uh, ad for negligee. Negligee. Yeah. Negligee. Yeah. It, it has two E's. So I only assume because that's not how you spell negligee. Doesn't negligee already have two E's? Does it? I could be wrong. I don't find myself in life writing the word negligee very often. Yeah, neither do I. Oh, I guess it does. So I guess it is negligee. I I don't think I'd ever seen the word spelled. Well, that's what we get for uh, not consulting Viscount Terry first. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Viscount Terry and the Archipelago. Yeah. (laughs) The Archipelago. God, that's such a good one. That was one of my favorite mess ups of yours. (laughs) Anachronism. That was another one. Yeah. Anachronism, anachronism. 
I forgot about that one. Yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> it's because I always feel like a dumbass when I mispronounce a word. It's a blemish. Yeah. It's a blemish that you On have my a rough time tolerating. Perfect record. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, I don't remember what I was talking about. The negligee, not seeing boobies. There we go. Yeah. Age gating, not seeing boobies. You have to opt iTunes. into the adult only content. And yeah. I think it's connected to your Steam profile. Yeah. That you have to prove you're over eighteen. I got you. But Valve has been kind of disliked for how hands off they are with the steam store really because you can just load you can just shovel crap onto the steam store there's a lot of game makers who will just take the same basic game and just asset swap it yeah and release the same game over and over and over wow but just like instead of zombies now you're fighting popes like <laughs> literally the exact same game they just swap the enemies wow and then sell it as an entirely new game that's dumb Yep, but it's a minimum amount of work. Yeah. For even if you make, you know, even if you sell 200 copies of a game versus how much work you actually put into it by just flipping a couple assets, it's. Yeah, it feels very like mobile y, where there's like half a dozen ports of a mobile game that all seem very similar, but like they're different, different creators in air quotes. Yeah. I go through the Steam library, the free version a lot. Yeah or the free games to see if there's any cool games for free that I can try out that'll run on my kind of older laptop. Sure. And it is all like world of tanks, some MMOs that are free to play. The first, like maybe 10 games are games that are actually worthwhile. Right. And then the rest are just like you said, mobile games, yeah, mobile clickers and things like that. Yeah. Which those are only good if you are so bored and you have nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. So Brandon, in our final story, how would you like to be able to have a phone that you could fold in half? More than anything in my entire life, Remington. And it would still work. Oh, wow. That's an added bonus. <laughs> so Samsung has... Okay, you know what OLED is? Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, an OLED stands basically for organic LED. Uh, If you look up the definition, it is a light-emitting diode containing thin, flexible sheets of an organic, electroluminescent material that is used for visual displays. This is basically allowing a bendable screen. Mm -hmm. This technology has been around for a little while now. We're looking at, like, oh, gosh. We we started seeing it show up in tech shows and those things, uh, like mid 2010 so like 2013 2014 2015 yeah it's uh, kind of been the darling for a while yeah it's it's a thing that has continued to be like this is a goal that we want to get to we've seen working versions of it uh we've seen bits and pieces of it working its way into the market and in 2014 samsung teased a foldable smartphone and they had a whole like concept video and everything where this this gentleman is at a coffee shop and he you can find this on youtube well you can click on the link in the description for the article if you want but uh he has this kind of phone that looks like a bifold wallet yeah and he has it opened up and he's dicking around on the screen then he closes it up and puts it away and this girl's like oh my god wow and then gives him her business card yeah and he's all like, oh, thank you. And then there's like this creepy like hipster guy who's like, nah, here's my business card too. Completely not important to the storytelling that's going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder, what is the hipster guy's point? I have no idea. There was none. This is why this was a concept video and not an actual commercial because somebody would have poo-pooed that. Maybe it's showing that like this isn't for hipsters. This is just for your average everyday person. Maybe, I guess. <laughs> Although that would be the exact opposite of what you would think. Yeah. <laughs> Hipsters are the ones paying your bills, Samsung. That's right. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I have a Samsung. <laughs> you just adjusted your black rimmed glasses, Remington. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You have black rimmed glasses. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Brandon, are we hipsters? Yeah. Fuck. No, I'm not. I don't follow any current music trends. Oh, okay. That's fair. <laughs> and you've listened to the same music since fucking 1996. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have. So anyway, uh, then they go on like that all happens. And then there's another fellow who has almost the stick looking thing. And it's a screen juts out of it. Yeah. As if it was like a piece of papyrus that's being unrolled. 
And then she forgets the first guy completely. Yeah. And immediately it's like, wow. Yeah, exactly. So now we know that in order to get pussy, you, <laughs> you need OLED screens. Yeah. Which is Samsung's coming out with a foldable screen this year. So exactly. So everybody's going to get laid, I guess. <laughs> Samsung is planning to launch a foldable smartphone later this year. Okay, so, and launch doesn't necessarily mean that it'll be available to the public. We'll get to that. This, uh, The Verge snatched this story up from CNBC News. Samsung CEO DJ Ko hinted the device could be unveiled at Samsung's developer conference in November, but it's not clear if consumers will actually be able to purchase the foldable phone this year. Ko admitted that the mystery device has been complicated to develop, and rumors have suggested Samsung will launch a phone with a bendable display under the company's Galaxy Note line. Samsung has been experimenting with bendable OLEDs for years, and the company first unveiled a prototype back in 2012. Since then, they have been reportedly testing dual-screen smartphones with the aim of bringing some type of device to the market. Co doesn't drop many hints at what to expect from Samsung's foldable smartphone, but he does admit the device and its features need to make consumers react with, wow, this is the reason Samsung made it. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean, but... This is the reason Samsung lived? Made it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turned away from Brandon reading. <laughs> he didn't hear me right. Samsung released a concept ad, which is the one that I just talked about. Samsung's device may include a 7-inch single display, according to a report earlier this year from the Wall Street Journal. The screen will reportedly fold in half like a wallet with the exterior of the device displaying a small bar of information. As I said, you know, this technology has existed for a while. Lenovo has been working on bendable phones and tablets. Microsoft has been dreaming of a dual-screen Surface device for a long time. LG even released a foldable 65-inch OLED TV earlier this year. Wow. Yeah. Which is in 4K. So. Of course it is. Yeah. I love this idea of the foldable phone. I don't know if I would get one. Yeah. Even if the price were right. I don't know if I would get one because it seems like just more to break. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, I, I would think that it would be actually easier to replace an OLED screen if all of the components were placed in the right spot. Because basically what we're looking at here is, say, in the instance of the screen that popped out from the little stick, you know, all of the light information is being sent from the stick portion. So if you tear or break your screen, it may just be as simple as pulling the connectors apart and replacing your screen. Yeah. And that would be crazy efficient. If uh, especially if people could repair their own screens. Yeah. And and easy. I mean, granted, I don't want to put all the the phone repair people out of business, but by the same token, like at least making it some because I mean, I can repair my own phone. Yeah. And I, in fact, I have I have a Galaxy S8 that I put a new screen into many times. No, just once on this one. Those things are still expensive. Oh, OK. <laughs> They're still like two hundred dollars for a screen. <laughs> and I screwed that one up. <laughs> Is that why it has that? Yeah, there's a little black dot in it from uh, apparently I didn't get a piece of glue or something oh. and it pressed against the screen and, and oh, killed. Man. the Yeah. So that's why it looks like that. And I just haven't pulled the trigger on buying a new screen yet. So uh, but it, I will eventually and I'll make sure that everything's clean on it this next time around. Uh, I've done successful ones on phones like that before. So without any issues. Yeah, it's not a particularly hard task in a lot of cases. The worst thing about say the S eight is that the screen, you, you have to get to the screen from the back and the back is a beveled or a, a bent piece of glass. So the hardest part is getting the back off without breaking that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done a repair on one of those? No, I've never done a repair on any of the galaxies. I've oh, okay. only done iPhones. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's, it's really easy to replace the screen in that. But you have to get through the back, and that's the hardest part. Yeah. So when it, whenever you take that phone to get repaired, unless they're really good at it, they may say, okay, you also need to buy a back as well. Yeah, they might just factor in the price of the back. Yeah, because there's a there's a pretty fair chance that you can break the back. The backs, from what I remember, aren't expensive, though. No, they're, they're not. between like 10 and $30. Yeah. Something crazy cheap. Yeah, they're not too bad. And the worst part is, is that I have it in a case. But if I take this case off, 
I didn't break the back when taking it off, but I have dropped my phone since then and have broken the back. Oh, man. <laughs> Through the case. <laughs> I have an S7 Edge that I got from work that I just need to get the SIM card for through my paid service. Yeah. And I want to use it so bad. I just need to bite the bullet and pay the 10 bucks to get them to mail me a SIM card. Yeah, for sure. Because I love Samsung phones. The S7 Edge, they just look so pretty. Yeah. And I don't really care about phones that much. Working at one of my last jobs when I, where I worked with you, where we repaired computers and cell phones and stuff. Yeah. Really gave me a love for looking at newer cell phones. Just kind of lusting after them. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't really sold on the whole, the curved screen or anything, but I didn't have a super ton of choice. I wanted to go with Samsung. Mm. And I didn't really care that I have a cur- had a curved screen, but... I knew that I love Samsung devices and I wanted to stay with that line. So I just ended up having to get a curved screen and I don't, I don't dislike it. I don't know if it honestly adds anything for me, but yeah, I don't know if it really adds a whole lot. It's just so sexy. Yeah. And I hate to use the term sexy to describe a phone, but I use it in a very literal sense that I want to have sex with that phone. (laughs) Yeah. The phone is sexually appealing to me. We'll be certain to keep it far, far away from your fingers then. (laughs) So that wraps us up. Brandon and I are going to go get some birthday dinner. Yep. I'm going to get some ribs. Yeah, we're going to get them ribs. I don't know why we went like really colloquial Louisiana Louisiana or Southern at least. Get yourself some ribs. We're going to get them ribs. Uh I guarantee. Ribs are New Orleans, right? Ribs are anywhere, man. Every everything has ribs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Except for invertebrates. The rib meat on a rat. Yeah, mm, so Delish. good. It just slides right off of those little tiny bones. Mm. Fish though, ugh, those are the worst. Fish picking, ribs. Picking fish ribs out. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are bad. Anyway. <laughs> We're getting hungry. If you have any questions or comments or you'd like to hear yourself on air, you can call us at 978-DU-OGRES. That's 978-386-4737. You can also reach us on Twitter at Dueling Ogres. Email us at DuelingOgres at gmail.com or leave a comment on the Facebook page. Oh, my God. I think somebody had left us a call and I might have forgot. Really? Maybe. I'll have to check. Yeah, check and see. I'll go ahead and read through these comments while you check. So our first comment comes from Viscount Terry W. Irvin II, who comments and says, So our future, nursing homes packed with the elderly wearing giant increased capacity diapers, hooked to nutritional IVs and tied into advanced virtual reality gear, watched over by AIs directing STNA robots, and probably having the not-so-old opting for this, too? Remington, you replied, where we're going, we don't need toilets? Yeah, it was a Back to the Future reference? Yeah. I mean, you didn't even read it like... Where we're going... We don't need toilets. Thank you. God. To which he said, so many oldsters for the STNA robots to attend to need the big diapers. We'll see. Um, I'm interested in how home healthcare goes with technology. I think there's a ways before. I don't think you'll see it on this generation. You might see it on our generation or the next generation. Yeah. This generation is going to be too distrustworthy of robots. Yeah. We also had a comment from Bucky who says, when it comes to the whole Elon Musk smoking weed thing, my mindset is it's a legal thing to do in the state he is in. So who cares if he does it? There's worse things in the world to worry about than a billionaire legally smoking weed. I totally agree with you 100%, Bucky. Me too. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, Jesse Starcher of Source Material Podcast. Go check that out on pretty much everywhere you can find a podcast as well, I believe. Yep. Said, you think he drug tests his employees? Bucky replies with a succinct, don't know. <laughs> Good job, Bucky. To which Jesse says, me either. I could probably Google that. Although if my boss held me to a standard he blatantly ignores while being filmed, I'd be pretty mad. But he writes my check. So I guess if you got that money, you can do what you want. That's the truth. And nobody ever said that the world had to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It would be a little, I would be a little incensed if I lost my job from a drug test because I smoked weed. Sure. But at the same time, he's not doing anything important. He's just walking around doing interviews and... Being a billionaire. Being a billionaire. Also, we had a voicemail that I forgot about. You. Yeah. Um, From Stephen Hines, the Diamond Man. The Diamond Man, The Diamond Man, Stephen Hines. Stephen Hines just uh, finished moving out of his old house and getting a new. Yeah. 
So we're going to go ahead and play his measures. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I forgot about it. We get these so infrequently that sometimes I forget. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, peeps. I love to hear your voices, but I need a constant reminder. So everybody call in once a week and I will play just all of you once a week. I would love to get more calls. I like hearing from people. Yeah. This way. I yeah. like hearing people's voices. It's It's a slightly better connection. That's a phone joke for you, for all you old people. That was good. Boy, that joke was off the hook. <laughs> that really rang true, Brandon. Waka waka. <laughs> Here's Stephen. Hey, guys. This is the Diamond Man, Stephen Hines. I'm super busy and my life is insane and going in a million different directions right now, so I thought I'd leave you a voicemail. Great episodes lately. I especially love the dribbly poops out of your amused part. I had to listen to that twice on the way to work. I don't know if that says more about me or about you guys. And um, I also have a problem with REM's wind energy plan of using Mud Zeppelin to kill angry birds with electricity. Um, I'm not sure I'm down with that. I, and, yeah, birds and horny dolphins. And you guys give me the dribbly poops. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the dribbly poops. <laughs> this podcast is so stupid. It is. <laughs> uh, don't forget that you guys can text that number as well. That's 978 du ogres 9783 Definitely prefer to get the calls, but if you'd just like to text, you can text us too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll read your text online as well, unless it's unless it's like sexting and then yeah, I'll still probably read it out. Yeah, we can read it out. Yeah, I mean, this is this is an explicit rating on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell 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 me about your. Nah, don't. Never mind. Your breasts <laughs> and penises. <laughs> God, I'm fucking. I just turned thirty four years old. I still say breasts and giggle. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe at our website at duelingogres dot com for news shows and articles pertaining to some of your favorite geek news, ladies and gentlemen. Amanda is putting out her f sixth YouTube spotlight oh, awesome. on a YouTuber. So that will be coming here. Uh, she has it scheduled for the end of the month. Uh, I don't know if she wants to release it any earlier or not. I have everything set up for it. The editing is done, so it's ready to go. If I don't know if she wants to release it sooner or not. I don't know if she just set that date arbitrarily or not. I have to talk to her about it, but it is set. She is back. We welcome her back and we'll see what more comes that way. If you want to contribute your own geek love for whatever, it could be comics, it could be television shows, it could even be sports. I mean, Brandon and I won't understand it, but you can put it out there. Yeah. If you have your own fantasy football league that you want to talk about, or you can talk about the what it is that the fantasy football league is all about talk about the headwear that they use or the pads i don't think it, it, i think that's the fan the fantasy part is that you don't have to worry about any of that talk stuff. about an ogre tackling another ogre yeah you could do that yeah that's fine too mutant league football come make content for us yeah for free for free <laughs> Because you love us and we love you. Is. That's why it's such a hard sell. <laughs> it is. I mean, you get to join in this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. And we'll probably have you on the podcast because we're not very discerning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that says more about us or more about your writing. <laughs> Maybe it's because we berate everybody. Too. Yeah. Somebody's about to like, I would love to write for them. Wait, Wait a, a minute. minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brandon, we've been doing this too long. We both just wait a minute at it at the same time. Yeah, we did. Oh, finally, be sure to leave us a five-star review on iTunes or find us on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, TuneIn, Squarespace, Bob's Burgers, Grinder, Tinder, France, Honey of Fish, FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> Or anywhere else you can find a podcast. <laughs> what was that last one? Farmersonly.com. Farmersonly.com? Is that a dating site for farmers? Yeah. Is that a real dating site yeah. for farmers? You don't have to be lonely at farmers. So until next week, ogres, keep your clubs blunt. And your tusks sharp. Good, Good night. night. I can't believe you haven't heard that one. I haven't. That's 
That's a new one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's right up there with Christian Mingle. Yeah. No, don't. <laughs> but the cheap bastard in you. <laughs> as soon as I saw you, like, hunker your shoulders up and, like, put your hands out, it's like, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry, Jews. We don't forgive you. <laughs> as opposed to real fake windows. They don't open. They're, well, they're locked. What? Yeah. <laughs> the windows are locked, too. You know, people constantly breaking into my upstairs. Seconds. Yeah, my second story. It's to keep out the ninjas. Yeah. You know I'm allergic to ninjas. Mm-hmm. All right, ready? Now. Ready now? Yes. Okay, good. Always about the branding. <laughs> I don't know, that sounded like something an old stereotypical Jewish man would say. Yeah. Really killed the vibe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that really put the uh, <laughs> put the brakes down pretty fast yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how you do. <laughs> if any anything that's dark is obviously evil. Yeah, story yeah. writing. Yeah, if it if it's black, mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> I would be no? careful. <laughs> if it's black, it's evil. Yeah. That's what Wizards of the Coast thinks. Yeah. So send your letters to them. <laughs> Not to sweet old dueling ogres. Yeah. At gmail.com. <laughs> See, now I have to leave it in. Yeah. It's awkward enough to probably not get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I, I mean, it, it feels a very, that was a lot of weird noises that came out of my mouth. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. It feels. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. A foldable, foldable. Clear if consumers will actually be able to purchase the foldable phone. Foldable phone. What to expect from Samsung's foldable smart? Wow, foldable is really. It, it's apparently the worst. Yeah.